Welcome to MSP Unplugged, episode number 26, Manage Unify Devices. I'm your host, Jeff Halish. This is our live show where we discuss different ways to run your IT business, whether it's managed services, consulting, a break fix, or anything in between. Let me introduce the co-hosts. We have Joe Kanazovich from Cyber Onsite Services. Joe, how are you doing? I am doing great this evening. How about you, Jeff? I am doing excellent. Enjoying the nice, cool air inside my office. Me too. <laughs> and also, we have Riley Chase from Hostify. Riley, how are you doing? Hey, guys. Doing good. It's great to be here. And Riley, I think we lost your video for some reason. Oh, yeah. Let me fix that. Let's see. <laughs> it was working before we went live. <laughs> and, you know, tech support. It's, it's tough. Um, all right. So anyway, Joe, I'm going to go ahead and kick this over to you. Normally we share a tip or a story that we could learn from. And so uh, what do you have for us this week? I have, I have two tips. The first one, you probably have heard it a bunch all over the place, but it's a story also. Okay. I had a um, I had scheduled an appointment with my accountant Monday to go and get my taxes done. About three hours prior to getting them done, I get a phone call from the front desk lady and she said, Joe, we need to reschedule your appointment for another day. We we have, our computers have crashed. I says, oh, okay, no problem, reschedule me. So two days later I go in and I'm in there with my accountant and I forgot all about the computers, right? And he goes, hey, Joe, thanks for rescheduling. I really appreciate that. I saw what happened. I heard your computers crash. He says, well, our computers really didn't crash. We got hit with ransomware. Ooh. I said, really? And I said, do you know how you got that? You know, did somebody click on a link? And they says, no, it came through our IT company. And I said, really? And I said, he probably didn't have two-factor authentication turned on. On He said he does now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so... Snap. The mor moral of the story is there's a real life story that, you know, and, and he said that guy, I, he wouldn't tell me the business's name, which that's fine, you know, but, you know, that just tells you turn on two factor on all of your anything that's connecting to anybody else's devices and your devices, because he said they got they have three offices in three cities and they all got hit. You know, that's that's a lot of work. Now, did they have backups to uh, get all their stuff back? They did. He, he said uh, for the most part, they had backups. There was a couple of machines that didn't. But I, I think most of their stuff, the important stuff was backed up. Let's put it that way. Gotcha. But I didn't get in. I didn't talk to him a lot. The only thing I said after that was I said, I take it. You know, you're using remote desktop to re remote into the main office. He says, I do. And I said, are you VPNing in? He said, yes. I said, that's good. And I left That's it good. at that. Okay. But big deal. Um, another story. This really is not a tech thing, but, you know, as a solo tech like myself, <clears throat> sometimes, and I had it happen just the other day, a friend of ours in, in a tech field, he called me and we wanted to chat. And basically he wanted to vent about an issue. You know, sometimes as techs, if you're especially solo techs, you need to vent once in a while. And that's exactly what he did. And, you know, and I give him my two cents about it and pretty much agreed with what he was coming from. But sometimes you need that. That's good for your health, you know? So my advice is sometimes if you're struggling and, and you just feel like, Hey, I got to talk to somebody, call one of the, one of your tech friends. And, and I do it all the time too much, <laughs> but, but uh, that's my two cents on those two issues. That's good. Yeah, that's uh, good advice. Definitely, that's why we're here as a community, right? Is to be there for other people because we're all going through a lot of the same things or very similar things, maybe at different times, and that's good. So when somebody's in a good season and somebody's in a bad season, they can help each other and vice versa. So it always comes back around. It's nice to have that community effort and people there to just listen. I know uh, <laughs> John will call and ask me a question sometimes, and then we'll, we'll get onto a topic that uh, goes down kind of a rabbit trail, and we kind of vent a little bit on our uh, customer base. And hey, we're we're good after that. Okay, 
<laughs> you know, a couple minutes and, you know, just don't, uh, don't dwell on that, but, uh, yeah, it's good to get it out and release it and, uh, you know, get it out there. So somebody can agree with you and just go, yep, I've had the same thing. <laughs> All right, Riley, what uh, type of tip or story do you have for us this week? Well, I've got a, um, a tip specifically for the, the unify people that are, that are watching the show today. If you have a unify server and, um, you know, whether you're centralizing it or using a cloud key, um, you know, let's say you've got a server on, on AWS or something. Um, you know, my tip is to, um, make sure you're backing it up. Obviously, you know, you should know that already to be backing things up. But in addition to that, um, don't just do the built-in unify backups because that only stores it on that server. And if that server has a hardware failure, it's very rare in the cloud that there are hardware failures, but um, I've had over a thousand servers in the cloud over the last two years. And the failure rate is like around, uh, like around 10 of them have had a hardware failure. And so when you're doing just your, you know, you check the box and you're doing nightly backups in Unify, that's just backing up to your server. So you wanna make sure you have a secondary source, whether it's enabling snapshots on that VM or something where you have a secondary source in case there's a hardware failure. And then my other, um, my other tip um, related to backups as well is um, make sure when you're connecting your Unify devices that you're using a DNS name. And um, it's really important that you're not using the IP address of your Unify controller because um, if you were to say uh, you're using uh, a provider like AWS and you don't have a floating IP address, if you were to lose that server due to a hardware failure, for example, you have the backup because you have the snapshots, but you don't have the IP address. You can't um, get your devices to reconnect unless you're using a DNS name. So you want to make sure that um, you know when you're using DNS, uh, it just makes it better and safer because uh, you can change the IP address your devices are all pointing to so that when you restore. So yeah, just a couple of safety tips with your, your Unify controllers. That's what I had for you guys today. And if you have any questions, let you know, just ask about it too. Awesome. That's cool. Not how that works. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. My tip or story, actually it's a story. And uh, so, well, it's kind of a tip and a story, I guess. As I guess they all are really kind of a hybrid approach. So I had an Acer Predator gaming laptop come in and uh, a, a young person brought it in and they were using it for school and, and they needed it uh, running. I think they did an update. And when they did the update, all of a sudden the computer stopped booting. So I go in and I'm looking at all the different problems that it might have, trying to figure out why this thing is not booting. In understanding that your gaming laptops are generally going to have two video cards. Nowadays, in the modern, modern equipment, your CPU usually, if it's a Core i7 or a Core i5, most of them will carry a video chip on board that. And a lot of these machines will run off that for your 2D graphics. When you go into 3D graphics, usually you'll have your NVIDIA card or some sort of AMD flavor. And so, laptops ever since they've gone with two video cards with a switch they basically suck because they don't ever work 100 percent right and i've never understood this whole process of you know, we're, we're going to save some power number one it's a gaming laptop plug it in i this whole thing of saving power and going from one one video card to another makes absolutely no sense to me manufacturers stop it one or the other that's all we need so I go in and I'm, I'm a couple days into this and I'm sitting here trying to figure this out. Finally, I go, okay, I think there's something just boogered in the system. And I said, I'm going to do a reinstall. There was really nothing on it. I backed it up anyways. And here's another tip. When somebody tells you that there's nothing on there, back it up anyways, always. Cause they'll always come. Hey, where am I? Yeah. That happens more often than you would like to know. So. Anyways, I go in and I'm trying to fix. So I, I get everything booted back up. It boots in. No problem. Boom, boom, boom. I start doing some updates. I get in the middle of an update. It does a reboot and I get caught in the same reboot loop. And I'm like, oh, now what in the world is going on? And I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated at this point. Cause I'm like going, I looked up the manufacturer's, uh, manufacturer's date of when the computer was built. So I could find out the warranty information. So I looked that up online. I'm like, hey, this is this is under warranty till December. And I was about to give it back to the customer and go, you know what? Just send it back, get it, you know, get it fixed because I, something's not right with this. I, I did a hardware test. Everything else was fine. 
Actually, the video card, everything in the computer was fine. But I kept having this boot loop. So come to find out, as I'm looking at it, I just hear, and here's where your logical thinking has to come into play. You have to look at things in a way that one of these things is not like the other. So you come to the realization there's two video cards. You understand there's an Intel video card on the chip, on the CPU. And there's also, and so that has a driver. There's also an NVIDIA video card, a mobile card on that laptop. And that's got a driver. Okay, two separate drivers. Well, Microsoft has always been wonderful when you're booting up a brand new system to put in a Microsoft display driver. And once you know it, what I ended up doing was I went into safe mode and I ended up going into device manager and I took out all the Microsoft drivers. I wiped everything clean. I rebooted the system. It grabbed the Intel driver. It was supposed to the first time. Didn't have a problem after that. Then I loaded the NVIDIA driver as we had tried to do that before and it didn't work. So I loaded the NVIDIA driver and no problem. Everything's working. Everything's good. I put all their data back and I was like going. So it's one of those things. So sometimes you have to look at things in a way that are going to make sense to you because the Internet's great, but it's not always going to explain every little thing for you to understand how things work. So just when you kind of go through these processes and again, I don't know, there was probably a better process had I remembered that initially oh wait there's two video cards you know it took me a while to come to that conclusion because i it's not gaming laptops are not something i work on all the time and i know they've sucked in the past as far as the switching video cards uh max are the same way uh you know they they for a while and i don't think they do it anymore but they there was a point where they were trying to save power and i think they were switching back and forth too and it's just it's never been a smooth transition i don't know why but I, the only thing i can think is Hardware and software is hard. So th there's that. So anyways, um, yeah, it was an Acer Predator and uh, I got the video driver fixed and uh, gave it back to the customer. They were so happy because they didn't have to send it in for six weeks and get warranty work done on it and get it sent back to them. So that's my story and tip. All right. So Riley, let's learn a little bit about you and where you came from and how you got into tech. Well, it's kind of a long story how I got into tech. I guess, um, you know, going back 10 years ago, I, um, I didn't finish high school and I got uh, the GED and um, I was living with my grandparents and they're like, you know, what are you going to do with your life? You need to go to school. You need to do something. And, uh, you know, I was going to community college and just studying business actually. And I was just like, or it wasn't even business yet because I had to do my gen eds, but I was like, you know, I think I want to be, get, get into business someday. And so that's what I was going to go to school for. And, um, you know, I was trying to get, make some money. I was doing odd jobs. I was painting, doing yard work for people, just trying to make a little bit of money. And uh, one of the people I worked for, this was in San Diego, California. And so um, one, of the, one of the guys that I worked for, he was a friend of my grandparents and he owned a software business. He owned a software as a service business actually called Miva Merchant. And it's a, uh, it's an e-commerce uh, business where you can, you know, get an online store like Shopify. If you've heard of that, uh, it's just like that. So um, <clears throat> he said, uh, you know, I'm, you've been doing a good job doing the yard work and, and helping around the house. And, uh, you know, I was making like 10 bucks an hour doing that. And uh, he's like, you know, I have a job opening up at, at the, uh, at Miva and I was, you know, I want you to be a customer support. And so, you know, if you, if you, if you're interested, you know, it pays 12 bucks an hour and I can, you know, you can work full time if you want to. And I was like, well, you know, I'm kind of in school already full time, but you know, that sounds really cool. So, <laughs> so I started working 30 hours a week and trying to do school at the same time. And, um, I kind of got to a breaking point where I just didn't care about school and I really liked the job. So <laughs> I ended up going full time on, you know, customer support as a support technician at a software company. And, um, and I dropped out of college. And so, uh, that's kind of how I got started. And then, um, uh, yeah, from there, I just got more interested in the different things. Uh, I started studying like Cisco. And so I got like CCNA certified. I decided I want to be a network engineer. I kind of got more specialized and figured out, you know, what I wanted to do next. And so I got, you know, Cisco certified. I got my first job at a, at a Cisco shop. That's like a small IT service business. And they gave me a chance, you know, I was just a young guy. I didn't have any experience, but he was like, all right, you know, 
you know, I got a little bump in pay. I was making 16 bucks an hour. And so, you know, that's kind of how my career got started. I just, you know, but I remember, you know, the first time that I wanted to start my own IT service business, it was, uh, I was making 16 bucks an hour installing um, Cisco phone systems like 10 years ago. And, and uh, I saw one of the, you know, one of the invoices, you know, as I was handing it to the customer, I saw, I was, you know, he's charging $165 an hour for the work that I was doing. And so I was like, man, I'd like to make $165 an hour instead of 16. And so that's, I think that's the first time that I thought like, I need to start an IT service business. This is just so much money. And, uh, you know, now of course I know there's, you know, he's got to pay for his, his building and his trucks and, you know, it's a whole different thing, but you know, at, at 19 years old and, you know, thinking that thought, that's when I first, I was like, I'm gonna start an IT service business. So I did. And so I started my own IT service business and uh, I was, I think I was 21. And, and so I, I, that's when I realized how hard it was. And so for five years, I, I struggled to start an IT service business. I wasn't, wasn't very successful with it. And um, um, ultimately I ended up starting Hostify as a spinoff, as a, a service for IT service businesses. And, uh, and what do you know, it, you know, it just started growing and growing. And by that time, you know, five years into, you know, uh, struggling to start a business. I had finally figured out all the little things I need to do. Like, you know, the, you know, outside of being the technician, I had to learn how to do, you know, sales and marketing and all those things, accounting and, um, you know, all those things that you, you don't think about when you get into business as an IT person. And so it finally all came together and it just so happened that it wasn't an IT service business in the end. It was a software business, right? Where I started at Meva Merchant as software as a service is what I do now. So it's kind of funny how it all comes back together, but, um, but yeah, so what I do now is um, we, uh, we host, we're basically a hosting company. We host um, Unify servers, just like, you know, uh, some company might host websites. We host Unify servers and we provide uh, support updates and um, yeah, that's really, it. it's really simple. It's just support and updates and um, we keep your server updated. We make sure you're following best security practices and um, you know, with ubiquity, what's interesting is the software is free. Um, but they provide very little support. And so we're kind of, um, we're kind of fixing a, a spot in the market where, you know, the IT service business owner, he wants products that are supported and updated and someone to kind of uh, look to for help with when things aren't working. And so, you know, that's kind of um, where we're at. So now we have, uh, we have over a thousand customers and uh, most of them are IT service business owners and they're using our service to connect all of their customers' network devices like wireless and switches and routers all up to one server to centrally manage their customers' networks. And it's multi-tenant, so you're able to, you're able to do that where um, all your customer networks are separated into sites and um, you can configure wireless networks, VLANs, and uh, routing and switching, all kinds of stuff. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much uh, the, the short, long story of how I got into IT <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and where great. it's at now. Yeah. So, uh, Joe, I want to ask you now, obviously you're using Hostify I and am. how, what made you look at Hostify and how did you get started with it? Well, um, I'm, I'm fairly new with Ubiquity. Um, as our friend John Dubinsky said to me one time, and I've been in business 11 years now and you think I'd have it figured out. I don't, but you got to standardize. You know, and I was flip flopping all all over the place. I was using different products, not to belinger the point, but a lot of people have been. I, 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 what happened was how I switched was I used to use Open Mesh. I was a big Open Mesh user. Well, Open Mesh got bought by Datto, as everybody knows, not to slam Datto, but they did APs as a service. Basically, they were charging. You know, you start out at like seven dollars an AP a month. And I said, hey, I, I have a lot of small customers. They're little. I'm not going to have them charge a monthly fee for an access point. I just ain't, I'm not going to do that, you know. So I started looking and, you know, some of our friends, Jason Miller and some others were using Ubiquity. Um, uh, so I thought I'd try it. <clears throat> the first time I put a system in, I used the cloud key. You know, I paid for the... I don't even remember hundred bucks, whatever it is for the cloud key. So it could be managed, um, you know, in the cloud. Um, and then I started looking, Hey, if I'm going to keep using, I use their switches. I use everything now, you know, um, I need a place to host this. You know, anybody that uses ubiquity and the Unify products, you got to host it yourself or a lot of people do it themselves. And I thought I started looking at, uh, a hostify. And I found out that, you know, hey, they, they keep 
the Unify controller up to date. I don't have to manage that. I don't have to mess with it. That's all I got to do is pay Riley so much a year and I'm in business. And that's what I did. You know, I started and, you know, it's like you said, like he was saying, it's just a great product. You know, you, you can do VLAN. I mean, you can make any change you want on any device at any time. Um, I like their products. They work good. I think they're reasonable. You know, I'm not here selling you ubiquity. <laughs> Sounds like I have, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I think they're fairly priced. I mean, some companies, some of their switches, like, boy, these are, they really like their switches. You know, I just, you know, I try to do what I think is best for the customer. And so I went with them and I do like Hostify. I like Riley's. Uh, he has like some videos, a lot of help, uh, support areas, just great. You know, and, and I, I'm fairly new at it, and I figured it out. If I can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. You know, I stumbled for a while. I thought, man, this doesn't make sense, you know. But, um, you know, once you get used to it. The other thing I do, too, I don't know, you know, uh, Riley might. I never even use uh, the what's called their uh, Ubiquity device discovery tool. I just SSH right into uh, all of the devices. I don't even waste my time with that damn discovery tool. And I know, Jeff, you're probably wondering what that is. But what it is, it's a extension like in a Chrome that if you have the device on your network, it's supposed to find it. So you can adopt it to the cloud controller, right? It never finds it. You know, I spent all kinds of, and I started just put the IP address of the device, connect to it with Putty, boom, and it connects every time. So, you know, yeah, I don't for, know if you, you might have some comments on that. Yeah, for anyone watching, uh, stop using the discovery tool, spend two minutes. If you've never used that command line or SSH, it's really not that hard to just run, you know, it's just one command set and form, and it's so much more reliable. And uh, that would cut down our tickets by about half if people would do that. <laughs> it's 99% uh, of our problems are with that Chrome extension for sure. Yeah, extensions could be kind of finicky when it comes to stuff like that, for sure, especially if they're not well made. Um, so, Joe, how did you find Hostify? I'll tell you uh, who told me about it was Tom Wilmot okay. in Chicago. I was, I was, I don't know where he saw it. You know, I don't know if you, you know, you were on something or what. But and I'm sitting, there, I'm debating on what to do. He says, "Look at Hostify." You know, I heard good things about that, so I looked at. I saw the price on it. I said, hey, I'm going to try it for a year and I'm hooked, you know, and I, what I like, what I like is the fact that I don't have to manage the controller itself. I don't have to worry about updates, security. The man takes care of it and he does a good job and he's a pretty nice guy too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll agree with that. So, so Riley, I mean, obviously you, you as you said earlier, you've, found a need in the marketplace and you filled it something that was missing and obviously you've made something better and you made people's lives easier something more managed so when it comes to what are some of the things that uh, your controller can do that would help people out on a regular basis well um you know the main thing is you know i have customers coming to me from all different levels of like how they're managing it and th the problem is uh ubiquity is pushing everyone that they should buy what's this device, which is basically a Raspberry Pi that runs the controller on it. And it's called the cloud key. And it's really what it is. It's an ARM device. It's basically a Raspberry Pi running the controller. And the Ubiquity wants, you know, they're a hardware company and they're giving away the software for free. And so, you know, they they want everyone to buy one of those Raspberry Pis for, I'm calling them Raspberry Pis. They're not actually Raspberry Pis. <laughs> they want to buy one of those cloud keys for every single customer. And, um, you know, you, they connect up to a central con uh, central management dashboard where you can manage all of your little servers everywhere. But um, it sounds like great in theory. Uh, but what the problem is for the IT service provider, um, after, you, you know, if you just got a small business, you got two or three sites, whatever, throw a couple cloud keys and it's not a big deal. But you're an IT service provider, you got dozens of customers and all of a sudden you've got a dozen little tiny servers that are unreliable, flaky, sometimes they get disconnected. Um, sometimes they get corrupted and you've got to manage updates, backups. Um, you got to take care of all this stuff for all these different servers. And they're not even good servers they're crappy little servers. And so, uh, <laughs> so it just becomes a nightmare to manage. And, um, 
you know, so a lot of people are coming to me from those cloud keys. Uh, a lot of people are coming from, uh, they didn't, they just didn't understand the model. They just bought the devices. They started installing, they installed the software on their laptop and they didn't realize as soon as they leave that customer site, they can no longer control those devices. If they want to control it, they got to take their laptop back to the site. So it's, it's created a lot of confusion and um, it's created a lot of management challenges because of the way that Ubiquity is kind of marketing it because they they're, uh, they don't have their own cloud solution that they're selling. So they're selling these hardware devices. And so it's created a lot of confusion. But, um, you know, some of my customers, they have already l realized the mistakes with the, uh, that approach and they've already got their server on AWS. They're managing it themselves. And they realize, you know, this is just one more server. I got to keep logging into every other month. They're doing another update. I got to keep on top of this. What if there's a security update? So, you know, um, you know, they got to keep on top of the updates constantly. And so, um, so yeah, it just makes it really a lot easier to, um, you know, if I was uh, one of you guys and somebody else was running Hostify, I would be a customer of my own customer. You know what I mean? So it's just, we know when you're an IT service provider, I think, you know, and I've met a lot of IT service providers and I think the good ones are, uh, you know, something in common that I've seen that I didn't take this approach when I was doing my business, but something in common that I've learned is uh, I think the best MSPs are really become masters of outsourcing things where the less that you have to worry about, the less that you have to control and you create really good processes, but you rely on your vendors and uh, cause it's just too complicated. You just got too many things. You got phone systems, you got cabling, you got wireless, you got security, you got, you got all these stuff. And so you got to have somebody you can trust that you can rely on to provide, you know, the solution and you, you, are uh, as the MSP are really like a salesperson connecting all the vendors together and delivering it as one whole thing to the customer. I feel like um, I think that's something I missed out on when I was trying to do my business. I always want to find a cheaper way to do it, do it myself. I know how to do it. I can host my own phone system. I can host my own control. I can host my own websites. And um, it's just too, too, too complicated. And if you do that, you're going to get stuck in the weeds and you're not going to sell. And that's really, the business is really just selling and keeping everything running and you know what I mean? So I feel like that's something I've learned from doing this too is, um, you know, so we're here, um, we're, we're, you know, here to uh, help you guys, you know, one less thing you guys got to worry about is what I'm trying to say, I guess. <laughs> so one of the things is, so that's a, a good point. And we call that a uh, jack of all trades, master of none. And I think a lot of people, we're all in this boat, right? Because when you start out in IT, generally you're a fixer of sorts. You like to fix and putz around with software. You like to fix and putz around with hardware or something in between. And it's hard sometimes to let go of things and processes and things that you do. And there are still people out there who will say, nope, I got to do it manually. And to them, I say, bravo, man, if you've got that much time, go for it. But, you know, as you learn that there's other things out there that can help you in your business and take a lot of that stuff off your plate and do it better than you ever could, then that is definitely the way to go. So uh, a product like Hostify, it, it definitely fills that, uh, that need in a marketplace where people can actually use something that's use other equipment but it's actually able to take over that equipment and, uh, you know, uh, manage it remotely and all that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, it's cool. That, that's a, that's a great thing. Um, so Joe, how long have you been using Hostify? I think I signed up September of last year, I think somewhere around that time frame. Um, and, and it, you know, to piggyback what you just said, Jeff, you know, how much is your time worth? You know, you know, I know what I charge an hour and and my time is better spent dealing with something else more than likely, you know, let let Riley take care of that. Um, and, you know, the only thing I got to deal with is firmware updates for all my devices. Now, I don't know how other people manage those and maybe Riley can give some input on that. You know, I don't have my, I don't think I've, I don't think I have them all set up. I have them set up to do manually. You know, I, you know, I could probably set an automatic, but I'm kind of a little nervous about that because they could update at the wrong time. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong on that. But but uh, yeah, I've been using it. I, I like it. Um, um, and like I said, the support's good, you know, and, and like he said, there's you, you, you as far as I know, you can't directly call Unify and say, hey, I got an, a problem. Help me with it. It's really the community knowledge bases and everything else, which is really can be frustrating, especially when you first start using it. Because I, 
it's very foreign to me the way it works. But once you get it, it's it's you know it's simplistic, right? Once you can figure it out, you know. But uh, at first, I, I I had a heck of a time. So Riley, when uh, some of the stuff that uh, that Joe was talking about, what was the question you were, you had asked earlier, Joe? Do do most people put on you know for their firmware updates for all their devices on automatic, or do you do you, you wouldn't know, or do you, do they do it manually? So with the firmware updates, um, so we so we manage the controller updates. We never want to cause uh, any downtime for our customers. So we we specifically don't do the firmware updates because we don't want to reboot your router. There's never a good time for all of our customers to be rebooted, of course. So um, so we let you guys handle that. But it can be automated. Um, there's a newer feature in Unify that you um, that you might not know about. It's under Settings, Services, Scheduled Upgrades. And this is a feature that's built in and it's a site level feature. So you can configure per customer, uh, you know, say you have a retail location, their busiest day is a Saturday and Friday. So you want to do their, their firmware upgrades on like a Monday night, but then you have a normal business and you want to do their firmware upgrades on a Saturday night. You can schedule on a per site, you know, per customer location basis um, when to check for new upgrades. Um, of course, you do still have the problem of, you know, what if uh, it doesn't auto upgrade? It's in the middle of the night, so that's fine. But the upgrade is, you know, the new firmware is bad or something. It's pretty easy to back out of that situation. Um, you can push uh, an old firmware upgrade or a firmware downgrade basically from the controller if you do run into that. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what I'd recommend doing is setting up under settings, services, scheduled upgrades for each of your sites configure schedules for them to automatically check for updates. And so that's one more thing that you can kind of just get off your plate where it's just going to, it's going to take care of itself. And then if there's a problem, you can downgrade it depending on how critical the site is, of course. Where was that at settings? What settings services scheduled upgrades. So that's another good point, Riley, is that you obviously you've created a piece of software that monitors and manages uh, the Unify equipment. And because of that, your your knowledge base of how, what it does and what it can do is probably going to be very vast as far as yes. the stuff that you <laughs> so, have. So. so when I started out, I wasn't any more um, talented or skilled with Unify than anybody else. Um, but because uh, our customers put us to the test every single day, we've you know we've, we've become you know extremely skilled at this, uh, you know, not to brag, but just because we've, we've had to, you know what I mean? So just like you guys have become extremely skilled at things you guys do just because, you know, your customers keep coming at you with, you know, what's this, what's that? So, but you know, within the specific niche, um, you know, yeah, that we have over, um, we have over a thousand customers, like I said, so we have over a thousand servers that we're managing. And then uh, with those servers, our customers have connected over 60,000 physical hardware devices, like a wireless access point and a switch. So 60,000 devices um, between just the two of us, it's myself and Safwan, he's a support, he does the support side of the business mostly. So um, yeah, between the two of us. Um, and he also, Safwan, um, before he uh, before he worked at Hostify, he worked at Ubiquity. So he already had a few years of experience um, getting hit pretty hard with customer support. Because by the time it gets to us, it's already something that the IT guys, who you guys are already smart people, have not been able to figure out. So we have to come up with solutions for the stuff that's really tricky. And um, and because of that too, it's kind of like an alerting system. Like we're the first to know about if there's a firmware that comes out and it causes some obscure issue. Like for example, recently there was a firmware and it caused a problem only with DHCP servers provided by a sonic wall or a Windows server because of a specific way that they're broadcasting DHCP. And so it was just this really obscure thing. And um, because we have multiple customers using SonicWall at multiple locations, you know, this specific router, this specific configuration, we are able to identify that this is an actual firmware bug. And what do you know, you know, later on, months later, actually, they patched it and they said, oh, this was a bug just with SonicWalls. And we're like, yeah, we knew that the whole time. But yeah, it's like these really specific things because we have such a big, um, you know, um, a group of users, but so much data coming into us, we're able to see like these firmware bugs that Ubiquity might not even know about yet. And so we're we're actually reporting on bugs that they haven't found out about yet. So um, when you're using a service like Hostify, you might have spent, you know, if you're not using a service like Hostify, you might have spent hours trying to find a forum post that, you know, is going to help you figure out, you know, what's going on. Um, you know, and these are the things where we have to start testing backwards. You know, does this firmware work? Does this firmware work? And so we've spent, we might've spent uh, 10, 20 hours solving this one weird thing. 
and then you come along and it's just here's here's how you do it and it takes two minutes you know so that's the stuff i love that's my favorite thing is we save people's so much time with those weird things you know because you're you're gonna know you know how to do 90 percent of this stuff or 99 percent, but there's always that one time that you're going to dump 10 hours into some random thing you know and so i hope we can save you guys time from stuff like that yeah windows microsoft display driver um yes yeah. <laughs> stuff like that <laughs> It's uh, no, that's great because uh, yeah, anytime you can save yourself time, it's also saving you money. It, as Joe alluded to earlier, and I was going to mention on that, a lot of times if, if people were to actually do the math of not paying for a service that's going to help them save time and money, they would figure out that they're working probably for $5 an hour and it would probably, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. If that's the case, just go grab a ruler. For those of you who don't know, it's about 12 inches long. Uh, be made out of wood, metal, doesn't really matter. But you can basically just, just hold your hand out and smack it on the top really, really hard. And that's how silly it is sometimes to, you know, not look at some of these services and, you know, try to save yourself the, you know, go go charge for a service that you do that you're going to make way more money on that'll pay for these services to help you in the long run. All right. So what other things does, uh, does hostify help you with? And let me go back to Joe, Joe, how, how have, uh, what are some of the things that have saved you time when using hostify? Well, you know, the, you, you know, the controller, but you know, we keep talking about this controller. So if you're not familiar with the controller, it's just a dashboard. I mean, that's the simplest way of saying it. it you know it's a dashboard that you can look at here's all your device here's your customers here's your devices that are adopted and provisioned or whatever that's what they call it adopting and then you provision them um you know i've had problems with um doing some firmware updates on certain devices like my own in my own home you know my home office i have you know the uh, flex hd most most of the people that use Unify know what that is. When I try to do the the update on it through Hostify, it it just wouldn't. You know, it'd say it's doing it, it reboot, and it's the same firmware date or uh, version. So I had to use Putty SSH into that, which is what is that? Secure shells. What SSH stands for? Secure shell. For people that don't know. Yes. Um, and, you, you know, I had to log into the device and upload the firmware and it works, you know. So I'm a big fan of not even messing with certain things with, you know, when you, you go to adopt it, I just use, you know, the putty and connect it right to the device and then uh, put it into the cloud controller. So and he, he simplifies it. Riley does a great job. There's some videos on it, show you how to do it. It's 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 not hard. Once you do it a couple of times, you got it. Thanks. Yeah. And, you know, that's part of the thing, too, is, you know, we've tried to make it easy to get started. Um, so we we have uh, common, you know, all the common things that you might. The first co things you're going to want to do is how do I connect a device? How do I migrate from my cloud key? Um, you know, how do I use my own custom domain name? How do I change my server location if I'm in London or if I want to be in Sydney, Australia? Or like, how do I get my server closer? So there's certain things that like really common questions. We have really detailed like instructions, videos, and um, you know, and and these are all things that we've learned are because we, we get the same questions over and over, and then we turn it into a guide, and then we turn it into a video. And so by the time you arrive, you know, we already have a thousand customers. We've done this a thousand times, and so you know, we have like this well-oiled machine where it's like, you know, this is exactly how you do it. And so that's kind of, and it's always a work in progress too. It's not a perfect machine. It's always becoming a better machine, you know, and that's, that's kind of how I think about the business is, is, um, you know, by the time the 2000th customer arrives, he's going to have even a better onboarding experience. It'd be so much easier. So. I, I agree with what he just said. He, he, you know, the big deal is, is, you know, when you sign up with Hostify and some other companies, it's where you really have a partner. It's like you have almost a coworker in a sense sometimes because you need that help, and especially for the solo, solo, solo people like myself. I mean, you know, sometimes you just, you just need help. You know, you got to call somebody. I, you, you know, you ready to pull your hair out. My wife can hear me in here sometimes carrying on, you know, she knows that 
I've got problems and I can't figure it out. And you need you need a guy like Riley once in a while to say, hey, he simplifies it, you know. So yeah, we got your back. That's right. And no. you know, a lot of our customers are um, you know, small IT businesses. A lot of them are one man businesses, some of them are are bigger businesses, some of them are um MSPs that have uh, you know, 30 locations. We have some MSPs that are actually franchise MSPs, which I didn't even know was a thing before I started Hostify. But um, but yeah, big, you know, big ones and, and small. But I really I really love working with the the one man IT business owner. I just think it's really cool because, you know, obviously I'm a really small uh, company and, uh, you know, it's really cool to be able to support you guys too. That is cool. Now, let me ask you a question. Where did you come up with the name Hostify? Um, so it's pretty simple. Um, I was just... You know, I I, uh, I had a list of ideas. So here's part of the problem is I, I had tried to do my IT business, like I said, for um, for a while. And it was just really difficult to do my full time job. And then how am I going to meet with customers outside of work and then do the actual work at the customer location on the weekends or at nights? It's so hard to transition from uh, from being working for an IT business to running your own IT business. And then there's the whole problem of conflict of interest. So I had my, my employer, uh, they ended up firing me because I had my IT business on the side and they were an, I worked for an IT business. So if you're going to do that, go work for a private company while you build up your IT business. It's such a better idea. So you're not, you're not, you don't have conflict of interest. But the reason I started Hostify is because, um, I got, I got tired of trying to build my IT business. And I thought, you know, if I can build an online business, it's something I can do on nights and weekends and I can write customers back on nights and weekends. And, um, I don't have to meet with customers at their location and, and, uh, and stuff like that. So that's why it's just start an online business, but that's kind of a long answer to your question. The real answer is it's really simple. It's just the words, uh, hosting and unify combined. So hostify hosting unify. And so that's, that's what it was, but the longer story behind it is, you know, that's why I started an online business instead of a IT service business. Oh, it's, it's a great name. I'll tell you what. And was that domain Thanks. actually available? No. So hostify.net was the original domain. And um, we uh, hostify.com, I actually uh, acquired for, uh, you know, once the business was had grown, I went and bought it from the person that owned hostify.com. And it, it wasn't cheap, but <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it was a squatter, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It was a domain, a domain, uh, uh, squatter. Yeah. It's a nice word for them. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like a real estate investor where they buy something and hold it. And, you know, I don't know if it was used for anything. I, I don't think it was though. It wasn't because I actually did check that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, there's a lot, there's a lot of, there's a lot of domains out there that still are not used for anything. They might have, uh, yeah, I don't know, just commercial stuff or, you know, ads or whatever that pop up. And they're, I'm just like, really? I just, I don't understand that, but whatever. Uh, you know, each of their own, but it always baffles me anyways. All right. So, um, Joe, is there any other things when it comes to hostify that you want to bring to light right now? Brother, well, off the top of my head, I can't really think of anything. I, like I said, I'm fairly new with the product, uh, but I will say, uh, I do like it. Like I said, it's uh, reasonably priced. It seems to work. You know, their POE switches and all their their devices, you know, they pretty much every day keep on plugging away. So, but I, you, you know, I don't have your, yours. I do not. The only thing okay. I've used so far is switches and a bunch of access points. I put, I use the, um, what is it, the AC Pro, a lot of those. Yeah, those are great. Yeah. Um, I've used some of the high dent HDs. Uh, but mainly access points and switches. I'm getting ready to do a, a new building. Um, a, a customer of mine bought a building that needs wiring and a whole bunch of access points and, you know, probably two forty eight port switches. And, and I'm going to use all the ubiquity stuff, you know, that's awesome. What, gonna... um, what do you use for the head of the network for the router? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, well, I was, to be honest with you, my firewalls were Calyptics and I still have some Calyptics out there, but I'm, I'm moving toward, um, help me out here. Untangle. Untangle. Uh, great. Yeah. See, yeah. that's a really common choice. So with, with, um, you know, with a lot of, a lot of our customers, um, also the, the fact that you moved away from open mesh, that's something we hear a lot or the data product, um, yeah, that's something that we, we were seeing a lot of people moving away from data, uh, you know, after that acquisition and uh, a lot of people moving 
away from Meraki when their subscriptions are coming up and they're like, oh, wow, I got to pay like all this money and, you know, let's rip it out and put Ubiquity in because it doesn't have subscriptions. And, and so, um, you know, the, you know, the real core value behind the Ubiquity product line is the fact that you don't have to pay this forever ongoing subscription. Um, but the downside of that is you don't get the support updates and or you don't get, you know, it's all DIY. You have to do your own updates. So that's where we're really, you know, meeting in the middle there is, uh, I like to call us the, the poor man's Meraki. So, you know, it's not quite Meraki level support, but I like, I would like it to get there. You know, if, if, if we keep getting more and more customers where we can have 24 seven support right now, we're just nine to five, but, um, but yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're kind of the poor man's Meraki where it's a lot cheaper. You don't pay per device or if you do, it's, you know, for 500 bucks a year at Hostify, it's 500 devices, like 10 cents a device instead of, you know, paying a bunch of money each month for, each device forever. Um, so, so yeah, that's a big part of it. And then uh, something that's really common though, is our customers are using um, other providers for the router specifically. Untangle's really common with our customers, PFSense, SonicWall, some of these manufacturers that just really have a good grasp on the kind of features that you want, like VPN and um, just more advanced stuff than what the Unify product line can do with the router specifically. They have a product called a USG, Unify Security Gateway. It's very limited in features. You know, it's fine for the right situation. Some of our customers, they put them in a restaurant, something where it's like, you know, they're not going to need VPN. They're not going to need um, a lot of traffic filtering and advanced router features. So, um, so it is really common that they, uh, our customers are not using the router side, but um, Ubiquity makes great uh, switches, PoE switches, uh, their access points, just really solid, reliable, and really affordable um, networking equipment um, and a lot of different um, access point models. So for different situations where you need a point-to-point -point connection or you need outdoor mesh or um, you just need some really nice looking, you know, indoor access points, they make a lot of different products. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about that, that router thing. Um, you know, Untangle is a great choice. So that's, that's good. All right, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back into this conversation as uh, we're kind of wrapping this up. But if you'd like to support this show, I would encourage you to go to patreon.com forward slash MSP Unplugged. And I want to thank our newest Patreon supporter, Rodney McDonald. And I also want to thank those that continuously support us. Without you, this show would not be here because, uh, hey, you know, it pays the bills. And we appreciate that. And plus, it puts a little fuel in our tank as far as Hey, people really care that we actually bring this show every week and talk about things that hopefully people, the masses are interested in and helps them uh, along in their business. They learn new, new things and they, uh, they're able to take that information into their business and plus some cool products and services that they can always try out because, Hey, I'm sure Riley, you guys probably have a demo. Yes, we do have a demo. Go to our website, click book a demo, and you'll meet with me, Riley, and um, I'll help you with any questions you have with the Ubiquity stuff. Very good. All right. So I think with that, if let's uh let's go ahead and take a couple minutes and maybe any lasting thoughts, anything that we have not covered, Riley, as far as is hostify. Sounds like you got a great business going, and it sounds like in a roundabout way, you kind of you kind of fell back into your niche, which is really good or niche if you're in Canada. Um, and so it's it's great to have those types of businesses out there because you see on a daily basis what people are going through and the things that they have to deal with. And again, you've come to the marketplace with a solution to the problem. And that's what we need more of, I believe, uh, in today's day and age. We need products and services that solve a problem and give us a solution to make our lives better. So is there any other things that we have not covered as far as Hostify or anything that you want to bring to light right now? Um, I just want to bring up that how how easy it is to migrate. If you are out there and you're frustrated and you're struggling with the cloud keys or you have some jacked up laptop configuration, we've seen it all and um, don't worry about it. It's really easy. Um, there's actually a site migration wizard built into Unify under settings, site, and then there's an export site button. And it really just takes two minutes to migrate each of your cloud keys or other installations, or if you're already on AWS and you're struggling with updating your server all the time, 
um, the migration process is really easy. So if it's something you've, you've heard about Hostify already, I hear this all the time, we've been putting it off, we've been putting it off, and now the server blew up and we got a big problem. And so we never like to see when people are migrating because they're down, they've got a customer that they can't fix. And so it's just chaos. So if you've been putting it off, just reach out, um, book a demo with me, like we were just talking about. If you go to hostify.net, click book a demo. Um, let's just talk about it and see, you know, and, and you know, I tell people if, if we're not the right fit yet or like, whatever, if you just have like a couple locations, you know, maybe a cloud key is, you know, just simpler and cheaper. But if you're an IT service provider, more than likely you're, you're going to get benefit out of this. It's going to pay for itself. So um, yeah, just reach out to me. Um, if you do have any questions after the show. Very good. And last question, what would be a, uh, the number one thing that people you've supposed to fight for? What, I, I guess, what's the number one Thing that you see all the time that people go man I, I i'm so glad that i'm able to have this and, and use it oh thanks for asking um it's really the support um it's somebody to call when things are going wrong or you have a question and with ubiquity like uh like joe is saying um they've built their business in such a way that they don't like provide they don't provide any support you have no one to call and you're relying on your peers in the community on the forums to uh troubleshoot things that might be mission critical. They might be in a production environment and you need somebody right away to help you with questions you have. So um, that's the number one thing is you have somebody that's got your back. You can give us a call and live chat us. And we're always here to help. Awesome. Joe, any lasting comments? Well, I'll add uh, some one more thing to that is, you know, if I can only tell you that, I, you know, I was an open mesh person and they have a cloud, it's called cloud tracks that they used to have. I could say Ubiquity's controller is probably uh, that on steroids. You know what I mean? It's there's so much more that you can do. You know, a lot of it I don't mess with, but I mean you can. Like, like uh, Riley was saying, you know, you can make changes, make your VPNs, you can do whatever you want. It's just a nice dashboard. A little confusing at first, but again, it's like any dashboard. Yeah. You know, you get used to it, and you're good to go, and. Um, yeah, I do have a couple cloud controllers that I need to uh, migrate that I haven't done yet. So <laughs> book that demo. <laughs> Let's get them migrate together. So Riley, uh, if anybody wanted to get a hold of you and find out more about Hostify and what you're what you're putting together over there, or just have some questions for you, where could they do that? Um, you guys can email me directly, rchase at hostify.com. That's uh, hostify with an I, just like Unify. Um, and uh, I would really like if you guys uh, schedule a demo. I love meeting with people. Um, you know, I just think it's really cool. I love that I get to, as part of my job, meet with IT business owners every day and ask them about, like, how did you start your business? And I like hearing everybody's stories and everything. So uh, if you have time, I'd like to meet with you guys for sure. Awesome. That is great. Hey, I'm telling you, that's that's great customer service there that you're not going to get just from, you know, some of the the, the bigger companies out there. So uh, definitely take advantage of that because in the long run, it's going to help you out in your business. And Joe, I appreciate you coming out tonight. If people want to find out more about you and, you know, what you're up to with all your annex and stuff like that, where would they go? Thanks for having me. <laughs> um you know, Joe at cyberonsiteservices.com. That's a mouthful right there. If you ever, I can, there's one thing, if you're going to create a business name, shorten it up a little bit. But uh, Ben, I'm on Facebook too at cyberonsiteservices.com. Also Facebook slash whatever. But uh, if anybody needs uh, to talk about something, give me a buzz. Give me an email. I'm always glad to help. Um, I'm busy too, just like anybody else. But I'm always like to take the time if I have, you know, to talk to other techs. And I will say, you know, um, Riley's offering all this, this help. I personally, this is the first time I've talked to Riley. You know what I mean? So my point is the stuff that's on his website and his support is available enough that helped me, a novice, get through it. So that's that says something. But he's... Appreciate that. You know, so. Okay. Good. Hey, Joe, I was going to say, as far as uh, I'm surprised you didn't take cyber on site services and do what all the other lazy people do and create an acronym. It's just, I'm, you know, anyways, uh, Riley, if you don't know, I hate acronyms. I think they're stupid and people just, I don't know, they're lazy. But anyways, uh, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, you don't have to believe me. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Riley, appreciate you coming out today and explaining to us about Hostify and talking about it. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing more from the community uh, that 
you know, uses your product and will use your product in the future. Awesome, guys. It's been great uh, talking with you guys. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right. Come join us every Sunday at 730 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or you can look up the other time zones online. I don't know what Paco talks about when he says, yeah, central, whatever, Eastern Daylight Savings. That what Again, it's Eastern Standard Time all year long, whether it's a Daylight Savings or not. Thanks, Paco. Uh, and we do miss you today. All right. Watch live and hang out in the chat room over on YouTube.com forward slash MSP Unplugged. You can chat in the chat room and uh, you know ask questions and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes we bring those questions into the show. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and your favorite podcasting app to never miss an episode. It will be automatically just given to you whenever we come up with a new episode. So you don't even have to go and search for it on a weekly basis. I want to thank everyone for listening and we'll see you next time on MSP Unplugged.